In the last video, I just replaced that one capacitor. And after about six hours of use, it completely exploded, scattering electrolytes and some of the paper that's inside the capacitor. The capacitor sheath shot around <laughs> in the subwoofer box. What this tells me is, yes, the capacitor needed to be replaced, but the capacitor was merely a symptom of a problem that lied further upstream. In this case, when we're talking about upstream, we're talking about the diode bridge rectifier. Schematically, a diode is like a dam, and if the river is a current, then it can only flow in one direction. If it tries to go the other direction, it's blocked. A diode bridge rectifier is the same thing, only it's four different diodes all put together. These diodes allow flow in one direction, but if it ever tries to go the other way, it's blocked. Physically, the diode bridge rectifier has a positive side and a negative side. The positive side is annotated by that notch, and typically if you get a fresh one, it's got a longer leg. The negative side has the shorter leg. To test with our multimeter, make sure that it's hooked up correctly with the red and the black wires. And then we'll use this diode setting. To test this theory, take your red probe, place it on the positive end, your black probe on the negative end, and that should give you a reading. If you try a middle leg, it will give you about half of the reading that you get on the outside. And that should be about the same with each leg. Those readings are consistent with a working diode bridge rectifier. But the true test will be if you switch around your probes. Now if I take my black probe on the positive side and put my red probe, put it on the negative side, if it shows any reading at all, then you have a broken diode bridge rectifier. In this instance, it still reads one or unlimited so that it doesn't allow the flow of electricity in this direction. Switching the red probe to each of the different legs should all give the same reading. Likewise, if you switch the black, to either of the legs, it should give you the same reading. If these are your results, you have a functional diode bridge rectifier. If these are not your results, then there's a pretty good chance that your diode bridge rectifier has been compromised. So see, a couple of things that you can notice about this diode bridge rectifier is that there's a positive end on the PCB board, and on this one, on the bridge there's a positive on the actual bridge and you match those up. Use solder wick to liberate the four legs of the diode bridge rectifier and remove it from the PCB. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it broke off. Heating the underside of the PCB, remove the old capacitors. Using the wick, carefully remove solder that's remained on the PCB. Oh, there we go. That was good. Mm -hmm. Using isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush, clean the PCB to remove any particles from the broken capacitor or any electrolyte that may have sprayed out during the explosion. Being this is an older subwoofer and one of the capacitors already blew, if there's an identical capacitor that could potentially blow, it's a good idea to just replace them both. Carefully solder the new capacitors into place, being mindful that they require polarity so the negative should line up with the negative and the positive should line up with the positive. Solder in your new diode bridge rectifier, making sure to keep the positive end of the bridge on the positive end of the PCB. If need be, install a new fuse. Okay. The first test 
we've got both capacitors in there, the new diode bridge rectifier and the new fuse. I'm going to put it in here just in case those capacitors explode, see if we get buzzing or anything like that. No buzzing so far. Next thing we're going to do is plug in the light and see if the light turns on. Fuse is still intact, so let's see if the light's on. We got the subwoofer all hooked up. Got some green lights there hooked up to the receiver. Let's see if she works. We got some foam. 